That should do it. Are you sure about this, boss? You're going to have to stop calling me that, Chief Flint. I'm not your boss anymore. You'll always be the boss to me, and Mission Specialist Peters just doesn't sound right. Sounds right to me. This little ship has been my mission and my life lately. Okay, are you ready for burn telemetry? Are you sure this is a good idea? Why not bring it in for a landing and then test the full burn remotely? What if there's another guidance system malfunction? I can get these fixes done so much faster by testing while I'm on board. And we don't have much time if we're going to have it ready for Tau Seti. I'll just do a five second burn here, starting ten seconds from now. If you insist, make sure your straps are secure. Three, two, one. Testing engines, boss? I'm trying. The injector's stuck. Get the emergency cut off. Already did. It's this new fuel mixture. Must have caused a runaway reaction. I'll have to wait for it to burn out. There. What's your velocity? Relative to Matilda, about half a kilometer a second. At least I proved this mixture can provide sufficient acceleration for our needs. Peter, Chief Flint passed me in. What's your situation? Hopeless, as far as I can see, Mayor. Out of fuel. Don't give up, boss. Maybe there's something else you could use for some propulsion. I'd get out and push if it weren't for the vacuum and Newton's third law. We'll get everybody working on this, and we'll figure something out. You don't have any other ships to reach me with. We'll think of something. I don't even have any food or water. Understood. We'll do our best for you. I appreciate that, Mayor. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. In the early 22nd century, the crewed asteroid 253 Matilda left the solar system on an interstellar mission. Generations later, after 114 years, a new star system stretches out in front of them. Episode 8, Unknowns. Dad, you can't be serious. I've never been more serious. You're 82 years old. How the hell do you expect to take 8G's acceleration and then fend for yourself on an alien planet with who knows what dangers? I'm still in decent shape and injections will help. But face it, this is a one-way mission. A suicide mission even if everything goes to plan. And unlike the other candidates, I'm expendable. Why would you say that? Nobody's expendable. Well, if anybody were expendable, I'd be the first pick. I'm old. I don't have many years ahead anyway. I haven't had a purpose here for 22 years. I've just been rotting away. A discarded memory nobody wants to think about. That's not true, Dad. I'm just not built for retirement. I can't keep spending my days doing Sudoku or playing hoverball. Every time I think I've come to terms with it, I discover I really haven't. If you feel that way, you can get a job. Hydroponics is always looking for people. After you've been mayor, being a drone doesn't cut it. I need to matter. I need to be doing something important. This mission is a way I can make a difference again and spend the rest of my life doing something momentous. Sorry, Dad. There's an emergency. I've got to take this. Peters, Chief Flint patched me in. What's your situation? Hopeless, as far as I can see, Mayor. Out of fuel. Don't give up, boss. Maybe there's something else you could use for some propulsion. I'd get out and push if it weren't for the vacuum and Newton's third law. We'll get everybody working on this, and we'll figure something out. 
You don't have any other ships to retrieve with. We'll think of something. I don't even have any food or water. Understood. We'll do our best for you. I appreciate that, Mayor. This is exactly the sort of situation I want to be involved in. What could you contribute here? Experience! I've been through so many things I can draw on. You know, this is kind of like that time 22 years ago, but that time Flint was in the air and Peters was trying to bring her back safe. Now we've got the reverse. <sighs> well, you can come to the meeting if you promise not to get in the way. I might surprise you. God knows we need every idea we can get to have any chance of saving Peters. We have to prioritize the problems here to buy time. What's the first thing that's going to kill him? Air, food, water? His air should last a couple weeks. He could live weeks without food, but he won't last more than three days without water. We've got a lot of people here. Let's split into two teams for the moment. One to work on the water problem, and the rest of us to work on the propulsion problem. I can lead the water group. Chief Sanders, you'll lead the water group. Take my dad and whoever you need and use the other conference room. Yes, Mayor. Tojo, Winkowski, Hernandez, Lee, Stone. You're all with me. I don't see how my medical expertise can contribute anything more. I have an important research experiment running I need to get back to. If you say so, Doctor. But stay available on Multicom in case anyone has a question for you. Okay, we've got a bit of a riddle here. How can we bring him home when he has no fuel? We can't move his ship, so we're going to have to move somebody over to him. But we don't have any other ships. That's the problem. Could we build one? Give me six months and maybe. Then what's left? Excuse me for interrupting. Go right ahead, Lawrence. Well, we don't have a ship, but we are a ship. Chief Flint, could we maneuver Matilda to catch Peters? Given his trajectory, we'd have to turn around, and you can't turn a 50-kilometer asteroid on a dime. If we turn over the way we're designed for it, it'll take a month. And the longer it takes to turn over, the longer it takes to backtrack from there to catch him. And then our gravity would make him crash. I don't know if we can pull off the kind of fine-grained maneuvers we need in order to exactly balance his gravity for a soft landing. Well, it's a new set of problems to work on. Better than what we had before. Hey, Arash. What brings you to my work? Did you hear about Peters, huh? That's a stupid question to ask the communications chief. I hear about everything. True, true. I guess they really just want to know if you've heard anything that I haven't. You want me to abuse my position to give you special insider information. Well, sure. Why do you think I married you? Well, I guess our years together have all been for nothing, because I haven't heard anything new of any consequence. Everybody's hard at work trying to do the impossible. Eh, your sister will come up with something. It's Earth data stream time in here right now. How much are we getting now? Just a few hundred megabytes a day after the error correction, but that's pretty impressive at almost 12 light years. Strange to be here in the year 2220 receiving messages from 2208. The weird part is trying to figure out what year it is on Earth right now. How's that? You could say that their equivalent of 2220 is 2224 because of four years of time dilation. Time passes faster on Earth than for us, so they're sort of in our future. But you could also say they're in 2208, because that's when the transmissions are from, and the last moment any cause on Earth can have an effect out here. You could even say Earth is in 2236, because that's the soonest causality can propagate from here back to them. The concept of right now just doesn't properly apply at these speeds and distances it's decades vague. We can't say 2220 for them? If they could see us, it'd look like we're walking around in slow motion now. Time is passing at different rates, here versus there. Relativity gives me a headache. 
they'd also see length contraction. <laughs> that means they think you're getting thinner instead of fatter. Too bad you can't see me from that perspective. Well, Marissa, I, I gotta get back to security. Not that anything ever happens there. See you after work. Hopefully I'll have some good news for you by then. I just don't see how we're supposed to create water that Peters didn't bring with him. Condense it from moisture in the air? That might get him a few drops if he had a condenser. But the ship is a low humidity environment. There's not enough moisture in his air to significantly extend his life. What about other systems? What do you mean? Is there any other system in the ship that uses water for some purpose? What about the toilet? Suction based, doesn't use water. The cooling system. It has a cooling system? The whole point of the ship is to visit Tau Ceti's inner system, where it's going to need cooling on the sunward side. The easy way to normalize that heat is a fluid exchange with the shaded side, and water is the most abundant fluid. The system is already installed for testing. Okay, how much water are we talking about there? Hmm, should be about eight liters in total. A person can survive on half a liter a day. We can ration that water to last for the two weeks of air he's got. If we can find a way for him to extract the water. He can open up the inner hole to get at it. He'll lose some radiation and meteorite protection, but that's not really a concern at the moment. Good job, everybody. I think we've accomplished our goal. Salish, I heard what happened. Uh, are you okay? No, dear. Of course I'm not okay. I guess that was a stupid question. How are you? Is there anything I can do for you? You could make me dinner, Tam. I'd really appreciate that right now. You yeah, might not appreciate it if I set it in front of the camera and made you look at it. True. What were you thinking, Salish? You're too old to be playing astronaut. You didn't have to be on board for that test. Maybe I was thinking people think I'm too old for these kinds of things, so it might be my last opportunity. So you just decide to go throw away your life on a stupid risk because you're afraid people will say you're too old to throw away your life on stupid risks? You're a lot younger than me, Sam. You can't understand what it's like facing obsolescence, seeing the end of everything you've worked for barreling toward you. You're right, I can't understand. You have a family who loves you. You have the respect of everybody. You had a happy retirement ahead of you, and you'd have been welcome to tinker with projects to keep busy. But I wouldn't really matter anymore. Once this ship is complete, I'm not needed. I need you, Salish. Our kids need you. Your friends need you. Aren't we enough? I'm sorry I've made you feel you're not enough. I'll think about what you've said. Good night, Jeff. We'll talk tomorrow. Are you sure it's not natural? Do you think I'm a complete idiot? I recognize a machine when I see one. You're sure it's not one of ours? We've never drilled here before. If you can explain for me how something of ours got nine kilometers underground in front of the drill, I'd love to hear it. Good morning, Amadi. You're gonna wanna hear this. Oh? Do we have our first crime of fear? No, but we've got our first mystery. Damn right we do. Who's that? Jim O'Hara from Mining Section. We were drilling a new ore tunnel like any other day when we ran into a metal cage. What? In a new tunnel? And inside the cage, there's some kind of machine. You mean an another drill? No, I mean like a computer, but not one of ours. Have you gotten air still around the area yet? Figured you'd want that. We'll have an atmosphere in a few minutes. Don't touch anything. We'll be right there to check it out. Sure, I wouldn't dream of messing anything up before you smart people take over. Maybe we should bring Ambassador One. Why? 
If it's not our tech, maybe it's theirs? I don't see how they could have planted something down there, but sure, have the ambassador meet us there. Dr. Peters, I'd understand if you wanted to cancel, under the circumstances. No, I'd rather be here trying to think about your situation than at home thinking about my husband's situation without being able to do anything about it. So, do you bring up the mission with your daughter like you planned? Yeah, this morning. And? She blew up at me, treated me like I was being ridiculous. Wouldn't even consider letting me go. Made me feel like a child. An octogenarian pilot for the most challenging and dangerous job of our lifetime is a hard sell. You know, you're as crazy as Salish. I'll bet he was planning on volunteering for the mission too. He had no business flying that ship at his age and look at where it's got him. I envy him. You're jealous that my husband is dying out there all alone? Not of the dying part but of getting to take those risks. He still matters. He still gets to work on things critical to our mission. He still gets to make his own decisions. He hasn't been put out to pasture quite yet. He seems to agree with you, but can't you find safe, age-appropriate ways to contribute to society? I wrangled my way into a bit of that, convinced Renata to let me participate in the emergency meeting. How did that go for you? Oh, it made me feel alive again. Just for a bit. I came up with the idea to look for water in ship systems and helped buy your husband a couple of weeks to be rescued. Thanks for that. And sounds like some great progress for you too. But the way I was treated for it. Renata was just trying to get me out of her hair by moving me to the water committee. She put Juliana Sanders in charge of it, even though I've got about 50 times her leadership experience. And if you ask any of them, they're probably giving Apprentice Tojo all the credit for knowing the technical details. And I'll bet nobody noticed how my problem-solving experience contributed. Why are we going into the mines? I know very little about mining technology. I do not see how I can help. Ambassador, we've just discovered what appears to be non-human technology. Naturally, we wonder if it could have been placed by your people. In a mine shaft? That's correct. About nine kilometers down. We have never done any mining on this asteroid. But could one of your people have placed a burrowing device meant to go deep into Matilda for some scientific purpose? I have heard of no such thing. Perhaps you weren't told? That is not the way we do things. Besides, we have no such technology capable of burying itself under nine kilometers of rock. I am afraid I have nothing to tell you. Well, that's why I asked you to bring your scanner. Maybe you'll be able to detect something important about it that we can't. That is possible. Okay. Atmosphere outside registers good and the heat will last us a while too, so no need to suit up. But do put on these hard hats because there's a lot of sharp rocks out there. There you are. Took long enough. We came as fast as we could. It's a long way over and a long way down. So, where is this inexplicable device? Keep your shirt on. It's just up here. Here's the cage. Vanadium. What? The cage is constructed of vanadium, a rare metal. It does not occur naturally in 253 Matilda. It can only have been manufactured. I think we'd ruled out the possibility of a naturally occurring cage already. C-10, can you point your light at the same spot as mine? That's the device. I will need to approach it in order to get accurate readings. Mr. O'Hara? Call me Jim. 
We're not so formal down here like you folk who sit behind desks all day tend to be. Jim, can you get us in? Thought you'd be asking for that, so I brought a plasma arc. Okay, let me have it. Are you crazy? You'd probably kill yourself. Stand back while I open it up. Can we go through now? Just be very careful not to touch the metal. When you get a burn, you'll never forget. The hole looks plenty big. Let's go. Looks like it's functioning. If only we can figure out what its function is. It looks pretty old. Actually, Amadi, it looks quite young for its age. What age is that? This device is between eight and nine thousand years old. What? How? I'd give that scanner a good long diagnostic if I were you, Ambassador. I'll scrape up a sample for Dr. Stone to analyze. That should settle it. I wouldn't touch that until we- Ugh! I knew that know-it-all would get himself hurt. Help me out here. Let's get him to Dr. Stone. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 8, Unknowns. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerim. Mission Specialist Salish Peters is David Loftus. Mayor Renata Matumbo is Kathleen Lee. Astronomy Chief Lawrence is James Lorenz. Jim O'Hara is Slim Sam V.O. Apprentice Tojo is Gwyneth Knight. Eva Hernandez is Lindsay White. Detective Aranya Satang is Sova Rain. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerum. Chief Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. The mayor's father is Roger Arnold. Ambassador One is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Eric. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Dr. Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. Communications Chief Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. Chief Botanist Juliana Saunders is Aaron Summonsby. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org, asoundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.